What's up, Rubits? Little Big Robots back here now in this place uh, with a quick video. Uh, not quick, it's actually going to be quite long, but today I thought it'd be fun to do something really uh, interesting that I've been wanting to do for a while, and that is have a discussion, um, a highly non-scientific non discussion about scale in action figure, toy lines, dolls, whatever, and using that discussion or using using scale to help me start uh, my next, what I hope to be a, a book or a series of short stories or whatever. I've written a book before. It wasn't very good, but it is out there if you want to find it. If you need the link, let me know. And I'll have some other hopefully useful links in the description, like better explanations of scale. So for today's video, though, we will not be discussing anything like um, uh, Warhammer 40k scale stuff like that that is miniature scale you have like heroic scale where proportions can be different you have stuff like that you i'm not going to get into that sort of thing i'm not talking also about like ho scale uh, for model trains today i'm talking about action figures toy scales and how it really is not um, super accurate if you're going to be doing customs and stuff which is what i'm doing so the idea is that I'm going to pick a scale that I want to work with and use custom toys to introduce characters in my stories. And I'm thinking maybe I'll release like a chapter with the two of the new action figures that I customize. So what we're going to do is we're going to not be talking about, um, like I said, miniature scale or like train scale and stuff like that. I'm not even going to get into explanations about that because you can look it up. There's... People get very uh, detailed about it. But essentially, the scale of a line is going to be listed in like a 1 slash 6, let's say. So let's say I have 124 written on this piece of paper. 124 scale. Basically, very primitively or whatever, you guys can get into the debate in the comments. This means that it takes 24 of this size thing. Let's say this one here. This is about 1 sixth. Ish, I'm sorry, 1 60th scale, takes about 60 of these end to end to equal the real length of the real spaceship. This is, of course, the Zerg craft from, um, from uh, Lightyear. So there's, you know, you can debate on how big it is. I'm sure at, at the movie uh, studio, they actually know the length of this actual ship if it was real. So six inches, if you see six inch scale, Hasbro has six inch scale figures. That is not a scale. What the inches are, or if seven inch scale, whatever, however you see it referenced, that is always wrong as a scale. What you're doing when you say six inch scale is you're saying you're using the, the descriptor name for that scale. So I might call 124 scale, which are like these guys, I might call 124 scale. Red scale, I can call it, uh, uh, you know, uh, destroyer scale. I can call it whatever I want. And all it's doing is it's a word to represent the actual scale. Six inches is a size. If that was the scale, then every character would have to be six inches tall, exactly. And so a six foot seven guy next to a five foot tall real life character would be the same height. So when you see six inch scale, that is just a reference to a line. So when Hasbro says our six inch scale, they're basically just using a shortcut term to their actual size. So this is a hexagear governor, for example. They do not call this, you know, two and a half inch scale or whatever that is. They call it a one twenty fourth. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might have the wrong scales here. I'm looking. I think that, yeah, that's right. Something like that. Anyway, <laughs> I get close, so I get mixed up. I should have wrote down their actual names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, I'm going to put this to the side for now. I'm going to start with something kind of interesting, which is this Iron Gear toy, toy. I got when I was a kid. This is a one I bought later, but this is still the same toy. I just bought it later. To give you an idea of scale here, <coughs> excuse me, this figure this character in real life is like 400 feet and i'm sorry i'm not using metric we'll have to convert those for you but or you can do it yourself but you got an you have an idea it's like 400 feet tall right here are, are actual mechas so that'll give you an idea of how big 
So a person on this, you wouldn't even really be able to see that well. So this is a 400 foot tall character shrunk down. So you can see how, how scale is being used to represent very, let me see, I have a, um, oh, I can't find it, a Star Blazers ship and it's this big. So it's like one 3000 scale or something like that. So you can use scale to really just give an idea of true size, but you, you as a toy person, if you want to do customs like I am, you can't worry too much about it. You've got to worry about how it feels, not so much how it literally is. So I'm going to start with one and one forty four scale. This is a not the smallest by any means, but this will give you an idea of where to start. I actually believe this is one forty four scale. Um, I got this from uh, I can't remember which model kit. Let me see if I can focus it for you here. So that's a one and one forty four scale. So we're going to put him here. And again, not the smallest by far, easily not the smallest one and 100 scale. This literally came out of a 1 and 100 scale kit. So according to Bandai, the people who made this, these guys are 1 and 100 scale. So again, you can see, get a little larger, a little larger. So we'll put those next to the 1 and 144. So you can already see the difference. And then we have 160 roughly. These are all, some of these are gonna be really rough if they didn't come from a model kit or whatever. So you have these guys who come from Rahio kits. If you don't know what Rahio is, R-I-H-I-O, it's one of the toy lines I collected, um, and I will put. You, you'll see. You just go to my uh, channel and search for Rahio. So that's 160 according to Rahio. This is a the Light Years series of toys, which is the same as this. I think it's roughly 160. It might be a little smaller or whatever, but you can see the difference there. That's Buzz, and that's Rahio. As a point of reference. This is also the same scale as Buzz. This is the uh, the character, oh, what's his name? Zerg. So you can see him next to Buzz. Now you have a massive difference, but of course he's giant in the movie. So you, some people might see that and say, oh, well, he must be a larger scale, you know, whatever, like 148 or, or 130, something, whatever. But he's not. That's the same character line. So you can see how scale is used I couldn't call this a one and a half inch scale. I call this because they're not one and a half inch each, you know. So this is roughly 160. So let's put Zerg back in a ship. This these, this little line, this light speed line is a lot of fun, by the way. Uh, this is the kid. You might remember this toy from the 2000s. Whenever uh, Iron Giant came out, I bought this, um, the Iron Giant remote control one. And this is the kid that came with it. I think he's roughly 160, a little smaller because it's a child. But again, it depends on where we're measuring to the top of the hair. Uh, next, we have 148 scale. This is an official kit. Now, this is harder to see because he's sitting. Um, I didn't have another 148 scale character. But he came from the uh, um, Amaim cartoon series, whatever you call him. But that's you can see, even though he's sitting, if he were standing, he'd be quite a bit larger. So that's not a great representation, but that'll give you an idea. Uh, next, we're talking, what size was this one? One, I can't remember, these are 125th, my Joy Toy Bot, so let's put, let's put this kind of here, I'll put it up a little higher, uh, Joy Toy, this is a, actually this came from a, a, um, oh, a model kit, I haven't built it yet, I haven't built the character, as you can see, this is the pilot lady person, and uh it came from a model kit that I reviewed a while ago, and it has the scale, and it's not quite 125th. It's a different scale than this, um, 32nd or something. So you can see she's kind of taller. But again, this is just giving you a basic idea. Um, I, I, I might have these reversed. Let me see here. This is 124. So we're getting into the familiar um, armored puppet line. So a little bit larger. You see that? Just a little bit of difference. So it's getting a little larger at this point. And this is also, I believe, the size for Hexagear, um, uh, you know, Armored Puppet, all those good things. And then we get into the very, very, very popular 118 scale. And you can see the difference here. I'm going to start pulling them down a little bit. I should probably pull them all down a little bit. Let's do that. So I'm going to fit them all on here. So you've got... You can see I did a big jump here, so I didn't I didn't really have any scales in between there. I have probably somewhere, so I'll, I could show you. It might be this lady here. She's kind of in between and just as a tall person. 
but that's basically a model kit of the uh, um oh my gosh why am i blanket it's one of my favorite model kits it's really really cool um uh votoms v-o-t-o-m-s those kits i got that kit from the pink one the brutish dog so whatever scale it is that's what she is so she's somewhere in there now this is interesting this is a line called um um, I am elemental. It's an independent line, roughly 118. I believe I asked the actual creator of the line, and I think they said 118. I can't remember exactly, but that gives you an idea. And you can start to see that you can see the obvious, you know, starting of the the line here, but you know, like it's very smoothly how it kind of starts going up. But you can see also some dips and valleys and peaks and stuff because. When, you know, is the female character going to be larger than the male character? Is it, you know, is there going to be some differences like that? Next, we're going to get into, uh, let's see, one sixteenth. Bruder, Bruder is so that's she's a little larger, and this is not a superhero character. This is it's like a working citizen. I love Bruder, by the way. Bruder is a fantastic German company that makes like toy cars, and if you have kids that like construction vehicles and stuff, this is a great line. So I'm really partial to this area myself. This used to be like my favorite kind of scale, but I'm, the 118 scale is great because it's so um, common. Uh, after that, we have 119, 112. Let's do 112th. Now, this is the interesting one here because 112th is the common term or is the scale version, scale term for... Uh, Marvel Legends, which would be her. That's America Chavez. And those are typically called six-inch scale, right? But they're not six-inch scale. They're six-inch average. And that's just the refer the term that they refer to Hasbro. Who, who makes these? I can't remember. Whoever makes these, the Marvel Legends, fantastic figures. They are 12th, 112th. Now, this is an old Avatar figure. You can see how old he is. My friend gave this to me. It's starting to split, but I really, really enjoy these older, the older Avatar ones. I, I think he's a smaller scale, right? Because, or larger scale, I should say, because he's just a kid. Although he might be as tall as America Chavez. This is a Fortnite toy. Jinx, no Jinx. What's her name? Um, I'm forgetting her name as well. I'm forgetting everything. But anyway, you might know that character. She's a little taller than America Chavez, I think, but she's also, I think, slightly older. So you can see how. We can fudge here a little bit. You could even fudge a little bit, and now we have giant. See, so I could, I might want to go with this scale and make giant. So, this is where it gets really, really interesting. So let's move them kind of to the flat bottom, so they're kind of on the same plane here. So that's one twelfth, basically, or what they would call six inch scale, which don't call it that. Uh, one eleven, I believe, would be these guys. Now, I'm not a hundred percent sure because this is one of my favorite set of toys I got in twenty two. Easily one of my favorite. This is one, easily one of my favorite characters. Period. It's a great line. It's the Lightyear two pack with Hawthorne and Lightyear. Um, it wasn't a Target exclusive, and then I now it's you can just buy it wherever, and you can get these for thirteen bucks. It comes with cool little parts and stuff. So definitely check out my review of that. And that should be roughly one eleven. You can see just a, if I if I show you the difference here with just these two, if they're standing up exactly the same, you can see the difference. The head, she, now that's also a stylistic difference, her head size, stuff like that. So she might actually be a little bit, of, in real life, a shorter woman. So she would, should actually be a little bit taller if she was a little tall, if that makes sense. But you look at the size of the head difference. So you really get into some interesting interpretations of size here, but you can roughly say... I believe these are 111. I, I looked them up, but nobody had them because they're just a um, random size. I would also look to, like to point out, of that Avatar toy toy line, here is another one of them, and you can see the difference here. So is he 112? Is he just a giant guy or normal size guy? He's as big as Buzz almost, which is a larger scale. So you can see how it can get not confusing, but that's why you don't say this is a 6-inch scale this is a six inch scale, but he's not six inches. He's taller than that or whatever, or smaller, or whatever. But so you refer to the one slash number instead. So that's 111. Next, McFarland's figures, I believe, seven inch figures, some of my favorite lines, period. I believe those are one tenth. They call them seven inch because I want to point this out. This is a seven inch scale. 
figure. So same scale, but you see the difference in this, just the sheer bulk and the size. This is your Space Marine, which is one of my favorites of all time. Seven inch scale again, but this feels appropriate to me because they are supposed to be really tall, seven foot tall or something like that. You know, she's much less bulky than him, but that's the whole, you can see how the difference in design as well is, is changing perceptions on what fits with what. But again, I could take something like this, put her in the same world, and this could be, I could turn him into a giant. So I'm having to think about that, like, what am I wanting to do? Then we get into some really interesting stuff. Um, Breyer, Breyer is a company that makes horse toys, like a doll, but these are very poseable. Uh, they have all the articulation that you get in a lot of, they have all the, the hands, the, everything that you'd get in this. The difference is you have real cloth usually. It's more of a real life type of toy. It is, well, it's why people call these a doll and that an action figure, but essentially it's the same thing. I don't, ref I don't care about the difference. So those are, Briar is a, a great toy line for kids or collectors who like horses. That's the veterinarian character. I did a quick review of her. And so now we're getting into some interesting sizes. And then you've got, <coughs> excuse me, I did not have a Barbie on hand. I should ask my wife for one, but you got basically one six scale. They're basically 12 inches, typically. This is Ray. I loved this style of line of figures. I have, uh, I have several of these. So see, now you're getting into rubberized. There's real cloth, uh, but rubberized clothes here. Real hair like a doll, but yet she's posable and plastic-legged like that. So is this a doll? Is it an action figure? Yeah. That's why I'm kind of tired of worrying about it, and I just refer to them all as figures. So you get into the really the, what they call Barbie scale, which is around 1-6 scale. She might actually be a little smaller. I think she's more like 11 inches. Um, and that would basically mean if, if Ray in real life was 6 foot tall, which she's not. But if she was, it would take 6 of these stacked up. To, well, if she was 12 inches. You get what I'm saying. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you want an example of a 1-1 one, one scale, a 1-2-1 one, one scale, 1-1, one then that would be the, uh, there is a full-size Gundam statue in Japan that is animated. Um, I'm sure you've seen it. I could link it in the description if you want. That is one to one means there's, it's exactly um, the size it would be in, in real life. So if this was a, if this guy here was a one-to-one, -one, if, if the company said this is a one-to-one -one buzz, then that means in my real life, Buzz would be this tall, <laughs> or in his real life. Do you know what I'm saying? In the real world, that is his actual size. So you'll see some interesting stuff with scale. You can scale up anything. Like this is the little uh, the fuel from the movie. You know, that could be uh, whatever scale that is. So it would take eleven of these, basically end to end. It's not quite like that, but that's essentially how it works. Now, to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, scale wise like i said i was filling all this range here 118 because there's a ton of really well de nicely detailed stuff but i will be probably painting them and stuff i'll be doing head swap stuff like that so 118 though y you can see it she would have a, lots of giant options because i want to make i'm going to have a few giant characters the seven inch scale is great for giants for this because there's a ton of these they're really cheap I see, I even referred to it as 7-inch scale. That's my buzzword from McFarlane here. I really like this, but then I really like this as well because there's a ton of these Fortnite and um, Marvel Legends figures, and they have tons and tons and tons of detail. Let me show you here a little of detail. So you can see she's super posable. Let's see if I get a good focus. There we go. Uh, she's super posable, but look at all the little details and, a lot, and all the little optional parts for like the, the, this... No, you'd have to cut that off, but you have little little bags. You can get these for dirt cheap for on sale nowadays. They have all these great options is for the backpacks, the hair. You could do head swaps easily. I believe these are relatively easy to take apart. So I'm thinking that I might want to go this route just because between Marvel Legends and this, you can find so many of them. And there, you can. It would just be a cheaper way to go, and it's not so large that it requires tons and tons of paint, and it's not so small that it would be hard to detail. And then you'd have a lot of options. You can see here for giants if I wanted to. So there, I could have a 
you know, like a giant person. I could even go up into the this action figure doll line here, like these kind of style lines, and and get some real cloth options and make an actual giant. You know, you could see the size difference. She's like, wow. Um, you know, so there's a lot of options there for that sort of thing because one of the ideas I have as well is I want to make a, a giant robot that the character, main character is going to pilot or is going to be a part of and drive around and stuff like that because I'm trying to put all the stuff I find I, I love into the story and giant robots is one of them and that would be not too giant. You know, I can make it out of foam core and fun stuff like that. So kind of a quick discussion. I'm sure I got a lot of information wrong here. I'm sure I've got some of these in the wrong scales, but you get an idea of how small you can go and you can go much smaller than that. But once you get way smaller than that, you get into epic scale like in Warhammer, which is like tiny, tiny, half that size at least, you know. So I wanted to steer away from these little tiny ranges because not only would I have to work on average in a tiny area, but when you start to scale up pretty quickly, you see the the lack of detail. So this guy can have a lot of like this uh, this character here, the one eighteenth, can have tons of detail in her. But then you get down here, and it's there's some details, but because it's so small, it's harder to create. So this gives you more room. If I wanted to make a small character, you know, I could use something like that, and have somebody who was you know half size, or let's say a little robot or something like that, and still be able to put a lot of detail in it. So I'm excited to get the project started. I think it'd be really fun. I, what I really want to do is uh, pick a scale, go for it, and I'm leaning towards these because they're so common and, and cheap and uh, fun and well-articulated. Um, if you want to see um, other examples of really great usage of custom toys to tell a story, I'll be linking some stuff in the description, like uh, Marwin Call, which is a gentleman who uses military, like one six scale military, like GI Joes, and tells a story with that, and he has for years. Um, um, he used it as a result of some trauma that happened to him. He was able to use the dolls to create a world for him to escape into. Um, there's another guy I have, I have his book around here somewhere, they don't have it with me. Um, uh, for example, the guy who made the, the German and World War II mech fighting vehicles, that Japanese gentleman, I'm forgetting the name and everything like that, I'll link that, created a whole world basically using toys and mech, custom mechs first, wrote the lore around that, and now has this huge mega selling, uh, you know, ac you know, model kit line. So it's really, really cool stuff. Anyway, let me know what you think. If I got any of these scales wrong, please tell me because I often mix these up and I forget to look them up. I know I got her right and her and Bruder. So I got, you know, and I got this, I believe. So let me let me know what you think. Uh, have any questions about scale, pop them in the, in the uh, uh, comments. And uh, please subscribe and all that stuff like that. Have a good day, everybody. I'll talk to you later then. Bye-bye.